through the dirt just like a seed, but you're never quite a flower. You feel more just like a weed. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Galen Lee. I don't know why you'd be here by accident, actually, but I'm Galen Lee, and this is Sunday Sessions, my weekly show, uh, with a different guest at uh, every show, and then I play at the end, and I am super excited to have uh, Luke DeCizio from Bath, England, um, here today, but I will do a disclaimer before we start that my rabbit, who is not supposed to be on the loose, like, we have treats in his cage, and food in his cage, and parsley in his cage, but he has decided to go rogue, and he is not obeying us and going in his cage. So if I end up screaming about my rabbit, it's because he is probably trying to eat some of my cords. That's why we never let him out during shows. So, getting that out of the way in case you hear rabbit-based commotion, I would like to <laughs> welcome Luke. And Luke, do you want to introduce yourself for people who... Haven't heard of your music or don't know, I don't even know, I'm really bad at this, where Bath is in England? Like, mm. just some basics for us who Some basics about the geography of stuff. Bath. Uh, yeah, my name is Luke DeCizio. I'm a singer, songwriter, guitarist, uh, presently favouring a nylon stringed guitar. Um, I've been, as we were just talking about, writing songs basically since, you know, the beginning. Uh... A fair while ago I set myself the idea that as long as I produced one album a year, ensuring that each album was better than the previous, at some point there was an inevitability to the fact that I'd get where my dreams would have me be. And uh, lo and behold, this is the space of life, and here I am. And it's, uh, it is, I was just saying to Gail, and it genuinely is an honour to be here, because I think like uh, most of you, if you are in attendance, when you saw Galen's Tiny Desk show, um, just bowled over and spectacular, and the moment you created, and just the purity, the beauty of your voice and of the song, it's a, uh, you know, it was a stirring and beautiful moment, and it's Aww. magical for me that this is, a life has coalesced this way, so thank you, and uh, yeah, thank you to everybody tuning in. Yeah, I'm so excited for people to hear you sing, so I actually have, this is my first meeting of Luke, um, he was recommended to me, I don't think you even know this, through uh, hmm. the person that used to organize South by Southwest said you should have him on your show, and so, okay. um, which is pretty cool, James Minor yeah. is his name, and uh, okay. he said you really should have him if you can, and so I asked, and I was very excited, but I, you know, of course, have to do some investigating, so I listened to your music, and I just loved it like i know everybody has their own taste you know in but this is the stuff that really resonates with me so i'm really excited for people to hear you do you want to do a song for them and maybe introduce it just so they can get a taste of what i've been listening to this week uh, as we prepared for the show of course yeah well thank you for that um yeah. maybe i'll talk about it after this is a song called 40 days um okay i'll talk about it now when i i wrote this song i was um Hmm. in the very kind of initial stages of touring and being out there in Europe and uh, I'd felt like uh, I've always had a tendency to invite a little bit more chaos into my life than I necessarily probably needed uh, you know, when I was out there in literally what I'd describe as my dream all of those tendencies, all of that kind of uh, compulsion kind of just drifted away and even though, you know, I haven't necessarily fought against alcohol or other things, but I think it crept up on me that I'd been sober for 40 days, and and this song kind of came out as uh, in response to that, just uh, this effortless space where I didn't need any kind of filter between reality and uh, my inner self. And this is a song about that, and uh, well, it goes like this.
here To have kicked the drink I couldn't have My happy place be wasted I was tracing on So many doctrines, absolute devotion Such a silly king and now I'm super dry Man, I was the gas tank cackling hyena From my overdraft, release me from Burden waiting on Relief, such a crazy thing To consider all those moments I've erased Think how compartmentalize my sublime from my crate. See if size if you have a key. Swimming in a bottle, compartmentalize your heaven from your bliss and such the death of me becomes a lucid thing. You may be walking. Through the desert, but in forty days, you'll wonder why you ever strayed, and how the ghost felt like a stream. Don't let the ghost feel like a stream. But I'm still a slave To all so many clever things Things that took millennia to divide That I gulped down just now And regurgitate Like a catchy song Such as the latest shape of time That took millennia Time took millennia to divide Oh babe, it's a magazine If it didn't shout out yesterday, it wouldn't sell That's just how sugar works It's a hill you can't climb down Not if you want to feel the breeze, you have a key Swimming in a bottle, compartmentalized your neutral from your throttle, such the death of me becomes a lucid thing. You may be walking, don't let the ghost feel like a stream. Don't let the ghost feel like a stream. Such a beautiful song. I love it. And there's about a million hearts in the chat. So when you when you are done <laughs> like with your part of this show and then I play and you log off, mm. I recommend checking out the chat before the show ends so you can see all the lovely feedback. Mm, uh, consuming all those lovely red hearts. Yes, it's really <laughs> sweet. And some rainbow hearts from Robin. Okay. So that's Okay. Fine. Thank so, you, Robin. Yes. Yes. I think she's in the room with you, right? She is, yeah. Yes, Make yes. sure you keep doing those hearts, baby. <laughs> Don't stop. Yeah. So, Amp it up a little super, bit. <laughs> super fun. So so that I liked that song because I feel like a lot of artists have struggled with like different substances, I suppose. But for mm -hmm. me, you know, like beer or the internet even or all these things mm -hmm. that are like so easy to get sucked into. And I thought that was That's a true. really good way to write about it like a silly king i was like yes that's exactly what it is like you know I letting it rule uh, so much of your energy for no reason so i like 100 percent. you've got yeah. it and particularly on the internet i mean this is a fine time to talk about it but we're, <laughs> I know. you know it's uh, sometimes it's important to remember there is the the space in between the screens and uh uh, uh this is a bit of a segue but i've got a song uh, at the moment called nothing the king and uh, it's, it's more in the theme of the song, um, but it's about how the idea of every screen is a dream, and we're k kind of offered this reality now where we can, at our behest and at our fingertips, have whatever reality we choose. And I think the ultimate eventuality of that is just recognizing that all this different is the time delay. Right now it's very instant, but in our 
in what feels to me a very real sense, like we have that already. Like life is a dream. The screen we're staring out of when we just look through our eyes, the lens projected on the inside of our brain, that's a dream. It just takes a little more time for the, you know, for the, for what you determine should comprise that dream to shine back in your face. And well, mm -hmm. I can only tie this back to me, but this feels pretty dreamlike and it's an honor to sing to you right now. Oh, well, that means a lot. And it, it's, you're right. Like what we, what we project out or what we see, I think we have a lot more control over that than we realize. I've been thinking mm -hmm. about that a lot lately. Just like, even the way, you know, you think about, oh, well, I'm working on a book right now, right? And mm -hmm. if I look at it through one lens, like, oh, I have a deadline and it's stressful because I'm not very far yet, you know? Or if I look mm -hmm. at it through another lens of like, I get to write a book, which is pretty cool. <laughs> like the whole world, change, everything changes, like just by literally the way you think about something, which is pretty powerful to, yeah, to imagine. So hmm. it's true. Yeah. Well, Galen, you're getting, uh, can you hear it right now? The sirens. This has been my most sort of determined spiritual practice has been overcoming the feeling I get every time a siren goes past and you're getting an insight if you can hear that into yeah. what it's like to live on this road. <laughs> a lot of sirens? I'm a country mouse at heart, Galen. Okay. And um, to just have ambulances and uh, fire engines going down every three minutes. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. But yeah. A lot I'm of, adapting. Yeah. How long have you lived? Are you in Bath right now then? Where is Bath also? Sorry, I'm terrible. Where in no, I'm equally as bad. I, where are we? Where's <laughs> Bath in relation to other places? We're an hour, pff, half an hour from Bristol, if you know oh, of yeah. Bristol. So yeah. Idols are from Bristol. Aldous Harding recorded in Bristol. We're kind of in the West Country. Um, it is the West Country, I've just been informed. So it's <laughs> West England. But that's um, not where you were raised? No, I was raised just about an hour from here, uh, okay. somewhere called Swindon. Oh. Um, XTC are from Swindon. Okay. Yep. I've Billy Piper and me. <laughs> no, it's not somewhere you'd have heard of. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's remarkable in its own way. But it's small, right? It is small. It, well, it's... It's, it's difficult to talk about Swindon because it has a bit of a, a reputation, but I don't want to fuel that reputation. So I will just say it's a lovely place and I'm grateful to have come from there. <laughs> That's cool. Well, so yeah. I want to know, so you started writing songs when you were very young, started mm. playing in bands. Are there any like mm -hmm. poets? Like I, you're such a wordsmith uh, in your songs. Is there poetry that inspired you or was it other songwriters? Not inspired, but like kind of mm. colored you know, I mean, I think we bring our own in unique stuff to songwriting, each of us, but then there's people we were touched by ourselves. And I'm wondering if there's anyone that you, that really gravitated towards growing up or? No, that is a good question. And yes, uh, I mean, obviously when I was young, I was just listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers and I, you know, I've somehow reverted to a Mohican right now, but I, that was all I wanted to be when I was young was, you know, a Red Hot Chili Pepper. Um, <laughs> I kind of grew out of that. Uh, in terms of the second half of that question, lyrical bands. Um, melodic post-hardcore predominantly, so bands like Me Without You or Piano Become the Teeth, Pianos Become the Teeth. I don't know if I know um, either of those. I should look them up. Just very lyrical. So Aaron Weiss, who's the songwriter, the lyricist in uh, Me Without You, a profoundly incredible human being whose grasp of poetry was, uh, I think, inspired by Raimi or Rumi. Rumi. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. But me, hey, our house is full of books and I am I'm yet to finish one. I'm not a big reader. I struggle. Oh. Uh, you know, for me, writing is more just like there's a flow. And if I get out of my own way and let my hands just write, um, words come back at me. I think it's predominantly uh, my life feels like an exercise in moving out of my own way in all these regards. Like the words are there waiting to be snapped out of the ether. And it's just, you know, whatever it is, uh, a feeling of um, imposter syndrome or something. Just that's the only difference between, uh, 
I think for everybody probably the the are uh, like utmost dreams taking shape, but for me it feels palpable. I think uh yeah, trust. Trust is the difference between me writing and not writing. Yeah, actually that's huge. And I think I I imagine anyone in this show watching who is a writer of any kind feels that way. I think we all kind of struggle with the just being like, if I put it out there that means I you know, it's a it's okay to just like let something come out rather than mm -hmm. analyze it so much before you do um, and worry about whether or not that makes you a writer or something. Those those ideas are not usually helpful or well, basically never helpful, right? So the that's imposter true. syndrome thing, that's, just, yeah. Well, I'm glad you make songs and you've had quite a few albums because I've been listening mm. to them. And my question, I noticed that one of the bios that you put on your Spotify was that, you know, that what you hear is what you get. Your recording is very bare bones. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I have gone both ways. I've done both. And yeah. I'm wondering, what have you ever done, like, full studio recording? Or do you just love this method so much that you stick with it? Because it, basically you said what we're hearing now is basically what ends up on your album, which I is true and it's so pretty so i don't we didn't change anything anyways but what made you go that route i guess because that's interesting to me hmm i think um i have definitely done the multi-track recordings you know layering and but the pursuit of that was always just trying to get to capture firsts you know i think there's always when you the moment you first write a song, when you first hear that melody, when the words first pass your lips, that is the, you know, the principle, that is the, the, the divine utterance, that is the word, that is like, that is the idea and it's untethered, untainted, just totally uninhibited form. And I want that, do you know, like that's what I want in every respect. I think that's all we want. And when we get wrapped up in traditions and you know, Rolling Stone, Gathering Moss and all that. And we do that in everyday life. So it just makes sense that in music, what I want to portray is the epitome of me. And therefore in music, I'm, I, I, as you said, like this microphone and just this microphone. I mean, this is my setup. I've been using it now for like two years, just the same plugins. Wow. I just, I, I hit record, I'll write in conjunction with um, recording. And my hope and my, yeah, my hope is that every song I offer is the first fully coherent encapsulation of the idea because I think there's things you'll never be able to replicate and there'll always be that oh, that bit was better in that take or that bit was better in that take and I want that bit of that take and that bit of that take and to me that is just mind-bogglingly scary. I, I've gone down that well and I go down there. I, <laughs> I spent a year recording. I have like the means to record and I never, re I didn't put the record out until five years after the event because all I could hear was the the distances between the uh, the, the vision and the reality mm -hmm. and so in recording like this and trying to like let that bleed into how I live life I think like I don't get a chance to foster an a, a ego in the song the song doesn't develop its own ego I stop putting ideas that I want it to conform to and I just it is its own thing it's just it comes through on the wind I I just get it down, I let it out. I never really stew over it. I never second guess it. And I think that's why, you know, 2020, I did three albums. This year, um, there's things in the works is all I'll say. But like, uh, that's for me, the truth of life and music. Just I want to capture first moments and just offer them to the world, like preserve the things that my own ego isn't getting in between. I don't want to calculate my music I don't want to say this is a version of me when it's been through the studio system and been tempered and tamed. I like the I like vivid life with, you know, warts and all and that for me is art like giving it away saying I'm I'm not responsible for the all of it. I'm just happy to be the conduit, be the talisman around which the sound coalesces and like that's for me why I love music that's so cool and yeah I mean I resonate with a lot of that my first album was completely done live so the looping and the singing happened at the same time um and so I did like three takes of each song and mm -hmm. we just picked the best one and mm. you know edited it down maybe like because the loop beginnings are pretty long 
Yeah. And and that was the <laughs> album. And I think it's fun though that there's so many different ways to see it because mm-hmm. one of my artists that came on, well, not my artist, I do not own him. His name is James Holt, and he was on the show about a month ago. And he's mm-hmm. like in the completely opposite camp where he gets mm-hmm. so much joy out of building like a sculpture of sound. And I just love that there's two completely valid ways to approach 100%. music. And it's that's what makes there, there's so much variety, partly because of things like that. Like, where, and I, I think that's why I love live performance so much is for the mm-hmm. same if like a ephemeral thing like here it is here's transient the, here's the one that it is unique. today yeah. and this is the one you're hearing uh, i just think it's so i i think that's how where i get my like the raw music part of it is from live performance you do a lot of there's a question in the chat if you do a lot of live performances i'm like have you toured i don't really know your musical history too much because mm. we're getting um, to know each other today here we are um and just one word on the what you said about James. Oh like, yeah, you're one. You're it is one hundred percent right. And as long as we live inside the story, our brain tells us we're going to justify how we yeah. come to be these things, you know. And it's just it's absolutely true. Like I'm less of a sculpture sculptor, more of a fisherman, I guess. Uh, yeah. like, like so, but maybe I'll evolve. Who knows? Maybe I'll morph into a sculpting fisherman. Um, and maybe he'll go down <laughs> the other road. I mean, like. You know, there's so many. It's true. Yeah, there's a writer I know that just does haikus now because she feels like she's written about everything from her perspective, and mm. a haiku is just kind of explaining what she sees in front of her without her own story attached. And so, mm-hmm. I think everybody evolves, and it's not like one is better than the other. Even we just no. all take these different paths to like, how do we create something, or what does it mean to us to create? So I think that's mm-hmm. so cool. I just think it's interesting that. You guys basically are on the show saying the exact opposite methods of how you record, and I think that's yeah, right. cool because they're both really talented, and it's and the music shines through on both of both of you, so it's really fun. Well, you're you're right, and music even as a term, like the kind of inexplicable je ne sais quoi that we're trying to encapsulate, and how you can just you know what space does it inhabit, what kind of ingredients does it take to make music like it's it's so vague yeah you're right and now i've totally forgotten where you segued on to live (laughs) touring oh yeah did you ever tour were you playing live and then we should have you do maybe we'll have you do another song and we'll talk about that after so people can definitely get to hear all three of your tunes because i want to make sure is that all right with you to play another one and then we'll talk about this year and live performances and we you know it's a good plan Okay, cool. I'm going to get out of the picture here. Introduce your song. I Well, my song. I, I guess I've somewhat already introduced her, though you've not seen her. This is R-O-B-Y-N. Can we call it a hit? It wasn't a hit, but it's, as far as Luke DeCizio songs songs go, this is, a, this is quite hitty. Um, if you find yourself on my Spotify, you'll find this in, the, in amongst the most popular songs. This is... Uh, what is this? This is a song about streams and, and torrents of uh, flows, you know, everything we've been talking about, but also a healthy dose of Robin. She snuck away in this one. <sighs> a spelling quiz. Never neglect the matter of your head in the clouds in favor of your desire to stop being unstoppable. A melted with stream and fought with the current task to turn. In favor of clean, I cannot hold down for expense. My woman, I'll be wise, I'll be wise. Personal lips and the passing hours, turning the tide. small statues when our count is full 
through the cracks If you'd end on your back with me If you'd end on Also, have just arrived at the spelling quiz portion of the song. So, uh, this is for the viewers at home, I guess. Um, if you find yourself wanting to join in, just to validate your own suspicion that you do know how to spell Robin, my other half's name, then don't stand in your own way. Let's do this. Um, uh. From the font of your youth to the drawer of your sleeves. As the box hedgerows and the rearing of news all oh. Any takers on the bed? Oh, Alright Hunch over my page and fill my quill Ravage my days Take your thrill all oh. people cheering in there sweet yeah that was so good um I a, <laughs> how does your voice get so high i think you can sing higher than me that is amazing did you have to train it like mm, no i i've had maybe two singing lessons i, I oh. um the singing lessons came about because i was uh, uh not supporting but i was uh, do you know gary lucas he wrote some songs with jeff buckley and I he, Jeff Buckley. Sorry, I don't know yeah. him. I'm pretty bad at knowing people, though. I'm gonna okay. give you an honest answer. Well, um, one thing led to another. Uh, he was playing in Bristol, and I got the opportunity to sing some Jeff Buckley songs with him. So I felt, you know, I should get some lessons. Just anyway, it was a total waste of time. Basically, it was with like a classical music singer, and uh, it just was what it was, and it wasn't necessarily a. But it made me feel better. Made me feel better about getting on stage with the guy, which was um, 
but I don't know what I learned, if anything. Well, mm. so have you been singing like that such a wide range for a long time? Or did it get wider as you wrote more? Well, I guess when I first started singing, it was mostly only that high. And oh. then the, <laughs> well, I was, you know, 11, 12. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the lower end kind of kicked in um, as I got a little older. Yeah, I don't really know. Uh, so cool. I don't know about my voice. I, I just, you know, I guess I've always been drawn to, you know, I like falsetto. But I think at some point, notes that would be falsetto, just I can now do them in my belly. Uh, yeah, just, that's what I mean. Is it's not all, you can yeah. tell it's not all falsetto, which is so cool. Well, yay. That was fun to see live. I heard that one too <laughs> on Spotify, but it's neat to see it done. Uh, in it, person, yeah. sort of, you know, kind of. In no, I get you. That yeah. is a fun one, especially like in a, in an actual venue, because you know, it's it's fun. It's a fun song, and um, well, we all deserve a little fun, hey? Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> I'm not known for writing a ton of fun songs. I've thought about that. Like, I'm yeah. I mean, I can't really pick what I write about because they just kind of come out, but. Oh, but like they have like one maybe two fun songs and then everything else is pretty pretty introspective or whatever so cool well i'm so glad they got to hear that so that was the question though have you oh, yeah. toured a lot like are you mostly in the bristol area have you ever been to the u.s like what's mm. your history with performing i guess <sighs> Until Goodbye Folk Boy came out, which was an album that I first released in 20... I can't remember now. But it came out properly in 2020. Okay. Um, until that came out, I had really only played... Uh, Bath is beautiful, and it's like a really gorgeous city, but it also has this uh, pub called The Bell, and The Bell is... Uh, well, the door, the sign on the door would claim it's world-renowned. I don't know if it's particularly famous, but <laughs> it, um, it basically has uh, an open mic night on a Thursday, which a small enclave of local hooligans religiously turn up to, come rain or shine. Yep. Um, and in that um, slightly, hmm, what would I say, ratchety space... <laughs> Okay, in that space, uh, I don't know, that magic happens and we've all grown and we're just through watching each other perform and I think like, that's kind of the, that was my live, that was my live show, that was where it all kind of, even just th like thinking about music in spaces like that, like that, when I imagine writing for someone, it's that room, there's just oh. an energy in that room. Um, it's a magical place, and I hope we get to play there forever and ever. Uh, but, yes, uh, post Goodbye Folk Boy, uh, I've been lucky enough to play some shows across Europe. I was in America when lockdown hit. Oh, wow. I was supposed to be flying from New York to Texas for <laughs> South by Southwest. Uh, and then for the last year, I haven't had the opportunity of singing... Um, to anyone except Robin and now Perry and recipients on the far end of the internet. Okay. So, and actually, one more word on live shows. I sing, uh, and it's just starting again on Wednesday, because obviously they've been particularly hard hit, but care homes, uh, nursing homes and care homes uh, for predominantly dementia sufferers. Um, that, if anyone has the opportunity to do that, if anybody feels like that's something that, I mean, it petrified me. I'll be honest, like when I first started doing it, it was petrifying, but that is just learning about how beneath a, a, ver a very thin veneer, we are all principally identical and moved by exactly the same things. Good God, I would not exchange that for the world and I genuinely can't wait to for Wednesday when I get, get to go back in. Yay. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I always try to encourage artists to do stuff like that. Like, um, I've played a lot of like day programs for people with developmental mm -hmm. disabilities or um, 
or, you know, like nursing homes or even schools with kids mm -hmm. because I'll play like someday we'll linger in the sun at a school and then like three fifth graders will start crying. But then we'll talk about like how music makes us feel emotion. And when you talk to them about what made them cry or whatever, mm -hmm. it's not the same exact scenarios. Like usually it's their dog died or their grandma died or they thought about some something that made them sad that's through a child lens, but it's the same exact emotions. Like it really is. I think all of us have the same exact, I mean, not we're not all the same, but I mean like the things that touch us, the, the feelings are the same in all different kinds of people. And so playing in those non-traditional venues, I think kind of makes you realize how much music is way bigger than the like Spotify credence we give yeah. you. You know what I mean? The it's pop so paradigm, much bigger than that. 100%. I mean, it yeah. is ultimately a spiritual practice, whether people know it or not. I mean, even yeah. watching like, you know, America's Got Talent or whatever, like you're in it for that, those moments where someone transcends above their physical form, the idea of someone achieving some kind of deified status, but it's for that sensation of goosebumps upon your skin. Like, I'm not saying I watch America's Got Talent, but the principle is the same, you know, like exactly as you said, like the emotional outlet, whether it's through a seven-year-old or a 76-year-old with dementia, music is a, a tide and a, a current that we invite people onto and allow them to experience a part of themselves, or in that case, that example you just gave, provide an outlet for a, a, a trauma, like if their dog has died, is there something they're grieving through? Yeah. And it, it's, it's a blessing, it's a gift you get from giving, is music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I didn't necessarily appreciate the extent to how thoroughly blessed I am until I've had to spend a year looking at what I had. <laughs> yeah. and. And, you know, it's just uh, not unique, but I, I truly, truly know from the bottom of my soul that when the opportunity presents itself again, I won't give every single ounce of myself to this because I'm like a, I'm a racehorse in the stocks that's been <laughs> so repressed for a year. I'm ready to run. Ready to run. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Well, I hope I play Bristol when I go to England, so we should probably okay. do a show together eventually. Yes, Someday. Please. Someday. All right. Cause Someday in the sun. Whenever, yeah, whenever that happens. Well, let's have you play your last song so that people can hear all of them, because I'm very excited to hear, uh, to hear it live, too. Do you want to introduce this one, and I'll get out of the screen for them and hear what you say. <laughs> well, on the topic of songs that aren't, exactly fun. I think this is top of the list for me. Uh, this is a song called Pull Beneath the Stars. It's fun in its own way, don't get me wrong, but this is more... This speaks directly to what we were just saying. Uh, I think the lyrics will do a better job at explaining it than I would. Um, but I think this song, ultimately, if I just summarise it in a line, is the recognition that the difference between where we currently live and heaven is behaving like we already live in heaven. So this is the song I wrote to say that. Distance, a forgiving, nor pride is a trap you slip inside and flaunt amongst the angels. Awful like a fool when you catch a glimpse of your reflection in their eyes. A 
is a pool beneath the stars reflects the heavens in your mind wrote i second and third my first heart with two more for each song i've heard today of luke's thank you for showcasing his talent no p- kidding no problem i'm excited that you got to do this i'm so glad this worked out thank you galen yeah. and thank you so much for having me like I, I couldn't more sincerely mean like when i heard i don't know i've learned something about myself even seeing your uh, tiny desk show and it's, it, it is just genuinely i don't know 
incredibly beautiful. Thank you for having Aww. me. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And your music is incredibly beautiful. I'm going to think about that line about the pool uh, reflecting the heavens for a while. It's I've been thinking about that stuff for lately, actually. So it's going to go around in my head for a while, I'm pretty sure. So thank you. Um, Just trying to think. Is it, so I know you eventually are going to get back on the road. England, maybe not so much right away. Do you have any timeline? Or like, how can people follow what you're doing when you do start playing shows if because we there are quite a few people in england on this stream they mm -hmm. come every week and so okay yeah so where would they find you just the the links i gave or is there a specific one um spotify will, sh will, will, will uh, show the shows okay yeah um instagram i guess i I treat my Instagram quite unprofessionally, so that's an insight into, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's a place to follow me. Um, what else? Uh, my, my next shows that are like on the cards and raring to go are in yeah. Vienna oh, cool. and Graz. They're two cities in Switzerland. Is that right? Austria? Oh, God. Is that sounds Austria? right, doesn't it? Vienna has to oh be in Switzerland. Gosh. Oh, where's Vienna? <laughs> Austria. Sorry, Austria. I'm lying. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's in Austria. I can't. I also have shows in Switzerland, okay. but I can't tell you about those. Okay. <laughs> well, that's why. Austrians, please don't hate me. <laughs> Dude, I've done I've done such things before where you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Hello, well, at least, Belfast. Yeah, at least <laughs> you're in we're Glasgow. actually saying it on stage in Austria. So good job. Yeah, this was just a trial just a small modicum of the embarrassment I'd feel if that happened. So, you know, well, so thank Vienna. you for teaching me to evade that. That's yes. Cool. Um, have you ever been there? I've not been to Vienna. No, I'd have no excuse. Um, yeah, these sh were shows that were initially booked for autumn of 2019. Uh, the festival is called Autumn Leaves, and then Autumn Leaves was moved to spring. So I was going to be playing Autumn Leaves in the springtime. Now it's been removed back to autumn, but a year after uh, it was first intended. Um, and then, uh, hopefully, in, uh, in, in, I think, next year, uh, Cat Stevens support slot. What? That's awesome. Yes. I'm also just leaking this everywhere now. I don't know no, if I'm allowed well, to. But. I don't think my show is that huge. Nobody in the big <laughs> media is going to pick this up probably. I mean, that'd be cool. I, that's Congratulations. That's going to be well, so uh, fun, I bet. If it happens. It was supposed to happen in 2019 and, uh, you know, how the world did what it did. But, you know, again, I'm not going to focus on what I've lost because I've gained so much from this year. And I think as a people, we needed this. I think just, I know, trauma and tragedy are never easy to digest and people myself included we've like you know it's been difficult people we've lost people but i think we've also gained something from going through something huge like this together the recognition that what <laughs> the ways in which we are the same are insignificant in the eyes of that which can tear us down mm -hmm. and also in the eyes of that which we can build and the future moving forward is for building with those lessons internalized so agree again yeah oh yeah Thank you for ending on that note. Uh, he is totally right, and that is that is a good thing to kind of put forth for the rest of this year and and going forward. So, um, well, I hope I meet you in person someday. I'm sure that I I bet I will have you a will. feeling. Um, I think so too, Kayla. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you for doing this with me today, and thank you so much to the people who listened. Uh, please check him out. Any tips we get will be split with him. Um, today and just buy all his music it's really good i've already listened to it i really liked it so um yeah oh yeah thank you right. yeah bummer that it's over so fast but thank you for well, coming unless i'm mistaken i get to hear you sing some songs now so. you do you do i guess i'll have you turn off your camera probably and mute yourself but yeah you can stay on if you want to do it that way or you can go yeah. to the youtube but either way I'll okay see you yeah in a well, little bit. beautiful thank you so yeah. much for having me Right. Yeah, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. All right. Cool. Oh, yay. Okay, I'm going to back up. So far, the bunny has not destroyed anything. Yay. So we're good. I'll back up a little here.
cool. Um, one moment. Yeah, maybe the mic first. There we go. <laughs> Here we go. Getting ready. Thank you to Luke. That was really beautiful. Um, I figured out a way to have me not have to wear headphones so Paul could hear it too, which is kind of fun. Um, because what a good voice and beautiful lyrics. So, maybe if we could slide this over just a hair. Okay, so thank you for everybody for coming. My usual, like that way actually, yeah. My usual announcements, uh, still hold. Thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring the show in 2021. Um, they are a music equipment and instrument store. So if you need anything, check them out. There's a link in my video. Um, also, thank you to Sean Anderson for being a Patreon sponsor um, at the shooting star level. Um, she wants you to check out Aerial Theatrical, which is a community theater in Salinas, California. And then um, the last sponsor for this show is Minnesota State Arts Board. They're providing funding for captioning. So thank you for listening. This was beautiful. I'm going to play a couple of tunes for you. Um, and then we'll be seeing you next week with Eric Clow, who is a disabled uh, performer um, out of Austin, Texas. And he is also a disability rights advocate. So he's going to show some of his music and poetry. And then we'll just probably end up talking as well. Because uh, that is always fun to do. So here we go. I think I'm going to start with Let It Go. Not from Frozen. There was one point in the show where Paul was laying on the floor trying to get the rabbit away from my amp cord. So luckily that worked. He got him out of there. So the hostage situation with our cords is hopefully not something that will happen every week. Here we go. When the smoke clears, when the dust settles, where do you go? Who do you know? When the damage is done and it blasts out the sun, to whom do you run? To whom do you run? Let yourself let Go, the earth to have, the need to know. Stay awake through the flow and let yourself let it go.
is Let It Go. Um, I am being informed in the chat by Iris, but today is a Mother's Day in Sweden, so happy Mother's Day to everyone in Sweden who is celebrating and to mothers everywhere. Um, so I'm going to play one more song for you today, and then next week I want to do another improvisation. So while I'm playing this song, um, let me know of a prompt of like a theme that you want me to do for next week. So... Um, I've done like the Northern Lights, I've done whatever, springtime, seasons, rabbits, I've done all sorts of prompts, and so if you think of one, um, feel free to send it my way. Um, so I'm going to play Moment of Bliss for you today. Um, I really love listening to Luke, uh, made me think a lot about just kind of, you know, being in the present, and so this is what this song is about. So here we go. There we go. Let's see, we gotta get a little shorter. It would help if I had my looping pedal on. Oh my goodness. Okay, starting over. This is the thing about live performance is it's actually live.
feel so empty when we're facing the truth, facing the truth. All we need to know lies at the end of our grasp. We won't choose to go, so we just face the next task. Humble. Ever simple, but we so often miss All our chaos can be pared down to this Pared down to this Pared down to this Moment of bliss But it's so hard to do Feels too empty when we're facing the truth Facing the truth All we need to know Lies at the end of our grasp We won't choose to go So we just at last Ever simple But we so often miss All our chaos To be pared down to this Pared down to this Pared down to this There you go. Um, That is Moment of Bliss. Uh, Thank you for spending many moments with me this afternoon. Um, And thank you again to Luke DeCizio. If you live in England, make sure you go see him when he's opening for Cat Powers. That's pretty cool. Um, And uh, I hope to see you next week and in the future. So take good care of yourselves, you guys. And thank you so much for coming 